Good day. Welcome to the Methodist Connection. Half an hour of hymns and songs and the stories behind them. Thanks for your continued interest and support. As we begin, we start off with prayer. Let us pray. O God, who do not change, we celebrate you as Lord and God of our lives. We thank you that you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Bless us now with your assurance that you walk with us through the changing scenes of life and that you will never fail us. Keep us steadfast in your grace and love that we will live responsibly using power judiciously and commit to serve each other in your love. Be with us that in all we do, we may truly seek your favor and honor you with our lives. In this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We begin with the hymn, O Praise Ye the Lord. The words are an adaptation from Psalm 150 by the late Noel Dexter. And he also composed the musical arrangement. Psalm 150 in part tells us, Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his exceeding greatness. This psalm is in no sense a mere shout of empty and superficial praise. It sounds forth praise from a heart of gratitude for all God's loving acts. It summons us to celebrate the God of creation with our lips as well as our lives. So now we join in praise with all God's creatures everywhere, both now and in all eternity. Let us sing praise to God, ascribing worth due to Him alone. A select group from the Methodist Choral now leads us in the singing of O oh, Praise Ye the Lord. It is numbered 24 in the Methodist hymnal, Voices in Praise. Our next hymn is, There is a place of quiet rest, near to the heart of God. The words and music were composed by Cleland McAfee. The first verse and chorus reads, There is a place of quiet rest, near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, Sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. Cleland lost two infant nieces to diphtheria in 1903. This hymn was a response to that tragic situation. 
It is said that Cleland McAfee was preacher and choir director of the campus Presbyterian Church at Park College, Parkville, Missouri, USA, when the tragedy occurred. His daughter captured the incident succinctly in her book entitled Near to the Heart of God. Quote, the family and town were stricken with grief. My father often told us how he sat long and late thinking of what could be said in word and song on the coming Sunday. So he wrote the little song. The choir learned it at the regular Saturday night rehearsal. And afterward, they went to Howard McAfee's home and sang it as they stood under the sky outside the darkened, quarantined house. It was sung again on Sunday morning at the communion service. The hymn was first included in the choir leader of October 1903. According to Dr. Hahn, professor of sacred music at Perkins School of Theology, Southern Methodist University or SMU, quote, near to the heart of God, a simple hymn expresses in a profound way the admonition of James chapter 4 verse 8, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you, end of quote. And so we dedicate this hymn to those who might have been tested positive for the COVID-19 virus and those already in quarantine at different stages. This hymn is numbered 365 in the Methodist hymnal, Voices in Praise. Please sing along if you are able this song, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. We hear next, people need the Lord. A reminder to us in these times to look out and truly care for those who need our support and care. The words of the first verse and chorus reads, Every day they pass me by. I can see it in their eye. Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. 
and they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides the silent cries only Jesus hears. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams is the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize people need the Lord? Greg Nelson and Phil McHughes is said to have written hundreds of songs together. And this particular one was penned in one day after they struggled to write. So they decided to go out for lunch. And it was during that experience they noticed how the waitress, though civil, looked empty and lonely. They looked around the restaurant and also discerned the other patrons appearing sad, empty, and even fearful. And so that day they made a resolve that a song had to be written to address the issue. And so People Need the Lord was penned on that very afternoon. We now invite you to join the choristers from the Sackstop congregation as they sing, People Need the Lord. This one is not numbered in our hymnal, but we invite you to follow along as best you can.
Born in Putnam County, New York, on March 24, 1820, Fanny Crosby, the writer of our next hymn, was part of a Presbyterian family. At six weeks old, she had an eye infection, and it is believed that she received improper treatment from a man who pretended to be a doctor, which caused her to become blind. That same year, Crosby's father died, and she was then raised by her mother and grandmother. Fanny J. Crosby eventually entered the New York School for the Blind. Her skills as a musician were well noted, and they showed that she had incredible memory and intelligence. Later on, Crosby joined the faculty at the school and married Alexander Van Alstein, who was also blind and a teacher at the school. During the 1840s, Crosby did not identify with any particular denomination. However, in 1850, she experienced a conversion at Chelsea Methodist Episcopal Church in New York City and became a Methodist. She was attracted to the work the denomination was doing with those on the margins of society. Fanny J. Crosby was inspired to write Rescue the Perishing after she met the men who were housed in a New York City mission. A young man came to Crosby and said, that he would like to see his mother in heaven. But according to the way he was living his life, he was convinced it was not possible. After ardent prayer with Crosby and everyone attending the service, he accepted God's justifying grace. That night, when Fanny Crosby went home, she wrote the words, Rescue the Perishing. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Let us now join a group from the God Town Church as they sing Rescue the Perishing. It is numbered 180 in the Methodist hymnal Voices in Praise.
We close with a hymn of commitment, Send Me Jesus. It is numbered 459 in our Voices in Praise hymnal. Let us commit to a life of service to our neighbors and friends and those we meet daily in our communities. We are part of God's big family. Thanks so much for joining me on the Methodist Connection. I'm Wayne Ford McFarlane inviting you to join us next week at the same time on the same station for the Methodist Connection. You may write to us or email us with your comments or suggestions for hymns you'd like the choirs to sing at Jamaica Methodist Link 143 Constant Spring Road, Kingston 8. The email address main office at jamaicamethodist.org. You may also send us WhatsApp messages and voice calls at 876-445-5713 or 876-925-6768. Do continue to support us by joining us each week in viewing these programs and experience God's blessing through song. We invite you too to make your love gifts for the upkeep of this ministry. Please make your checks payable to the Jamaica Methodist link or use one of the contacts on your screen to arrange for electronic transfers or deposits. Do have a very good day, and the peace of Christ be with you now and always.